right here with Kate and Alice. We've been getting a few logs out, trying to get the kinks worked out of everything. Uh, yesterday we skid some up here in this corner and we came down right through here and y'all can see my skid trail. Uh, we basically been swamp logging. Uh, it's been pretty wet. Uh, but we're working trying to get this one load out. We got several more trees to cut, but we're working to get what we've got down out now so we can push the brush up and then have a hole to put some more trees in as we go. Uh, so we're trying to finish this load out now. Okay. Whoa. Now when we're separating logs uh, after we've cut them up and we're getting them out of where the tree is laying like we are here, it can be a little bit of a chore at times to break them loose because they'll rub on each other and cause a lot of friction and whatnot. Uh, <clears throat> so my mule is gonna have to, you know, get with it here for just a few seconds to get it broke loose. All right, a little bit. Okay, we're They're a little bit soft from having the last month or so off, uh, but even still, we're getting by. This area uh, below this pond is kind of a wet area, and it grows a lot of uh, like sweet gum, uh, black gum, water oak, pin oak, uh, stuff like that. So it's a lot of heavier hardwood. You know, most of the wood on this job is going to be heavy, so. Uh, you know, we're going to have to get everybody hardened back up and in shape, including myself. Now, y'all, I wanted to explain something to you right quick. One reason why I'm using tongs in this particular application, I'm doing it for two reasons. One, that sweet gum was salimi, uh, and it's just easier to get the logs out with the tongs versus trying to get a chain under it and whatnot. But also, it's right here on this hill uh where the log where i'm going down the back side of this pond down you can see how it's kind of on a slope and uh having two points of contact on it with the tongs helps a little bit with the rolling versus a chain or a grab or something like that uh, but i don't really like using the tongs with the log cart just because of the angle that it pulls at it's hard to get best use out of them to be honest with you now we stopped right here uh quite a bit in the video y'all notice uh and y'all it's for letting them build their wind back up you know you don't want to pull them and just make them go and go and go and go you know you want to give them plenty of breaks and let them get the wind built back up it, it starts up a hill right along in here up the back side of this pond down uh, up here to the truck and it's just it's hard on them you know to go and go and go so i like to give them a break you know ever so many feet and you just kind of have to watch your mules and know your animals, really. But there's no point in begging them to go further than they can go. You know, let them blow a little bit, get their steam built back up, and then go on. Now, right there is the reason why you don't want to get right up on a log when you're walking beside of it, because they can always roll or twist or whatnot, and it can get your foot caught. Uh, and there's some spurs sticking out on this thing so and it was starting to plow into the dirt and that's why i'm going to get my pv here and kind of try to roll it back off of that spur it's hard enough pulling it up this little old hill here uh without that spur digging in and we had to skid them all the way over here because this is the closest we could get the truck without worrying about the truck getting Whoa. stuck because down there behind us in that flat it's mighty muddy and soft down there
I had to trim some of these limbs back where I could get in here and get this log out. And y'all, to be honest with you, I don't really never know exactly how I'm going to skid it until the time comes. So when we're cutting timber, we just try to limit as best we can and and uh, go from there. But now one thing, I don't know if y'all picked up on it or not, but I limbed that other one up at the truck. Or not limbed it up, but I, I trimmed it up the best I could. And y'all, you want to take the meal the best possible product you can. And also it lays better on the log truck. But uh, I trimmed it up up there at the truck because they had just got through making a long drag. And, you know, my mules are still three years old. They're broke pretty good, but they're not bomb proof yet. And after they had made that long drag, you know, they was happy to stand there and blow and let me trim up that log. And then once we got back out here, uh, you know, they were already used to hearing the chainsaw and whatnot. And, well, it's just a little bit of training, I guess you could say. You know, anytime you're working the animals, you need to be training and focusing on making everything better.
Now with these smaller logs, I don't have to really give them a break up through here. You know, they can handle it pretty good. Uh, but I just kind of want y'all to notice the differences in the size of the logs and when I give them breaks and whatnot. You know, you got to take care of your animals and the animals will take care of you. Now to those of you that are new to our channel and are just starting to watch, yeah, we have to back up a lot when we get first hooked to a log. And the main reason for that is because every time we shorten up, it will pick the log up higher and higher, getting the butt up out of the dirt. And that makes it easier on the mules to pull. Now right here, I realized I was on the wrong side of the log. Anytime you're going on a hill on the slope, always, always, always be on the uphill side of the log because if that log rolls it will roll over your feet and trip you up take you down whatnot and can really hurt you
black cake. All of them. All right, now come up. Well, y'all, thanks again for watching, and I uh, want to send a special thanks to my wife, Marcy, for coming out and taking this video for us. I really appreciate it, and uh, y'all take care and have a good one.